Okay, so we are going to continue um, in project two, working with rasters and basically within the same sphere of terrain analysis, but a subset that's going to be called least cost analysis. You again might colloquially know this as least cost paths or least cost surface or something like that, but the term we're going to use is least cost analysis. And if you're following along in the project uh, to description, basically we're in part three here. So we're going to do all of these steps in part three today. So let's see where we left off. We uh, had created a working directory and we did the basics of terrain analysis, creating our slope and aspect and flow accumulation, our landforms, etc. And we extracted our streams. So um, you know, you can work in any way you want in GRASS, but probably the safest way or the smartest way is to create different map sets for different aspects of, uh, you know, the kinds of analyses that you're going to do. So first thing first, um, I called this working, and I want to rename that. Now, at the moment, there's no uh, simple way to do it from within GRASS, and I think uh, this might be something that can be changed in an update, so I might suggest it when I get a chance. Uh, but for now, what we have to do is to go into our file system. This is just my regular file system. Find our GRASS data folder, so I, I happen to be in happen to put it here. Uh, this is my laptop at home, so it's a different computer. I had to share it over Dropbox. So I moved the whole grass data folder from my work computer into my Dropbox, and now it's synced, and I have it here. So this is our location, Hasa WGS UTM Zone 36 North, and here's the two folders that are map sets. Now we don't want to rename permanent. If we do, it will break because inside permanent are a special couple of um, files, default window, and proj info, proj units, etc those particular little text files they just have information in them about the projection system so uh, here's proj info for example and if you rename permanent anything besides permanent grass won't know where to look to find that very specific information about the projection system and so it will say sorry i can't load this this isn't a real location it doesn't have the permanent map set that i need however you can just use your file browser to rename other map sets. So I'm just going to right click on mine uh, and rename. That's how I do it on my Linux computer. And I'm just going to call this Terrain Analysis, which is probably the name I should have given it the first time around. Now that that's done, we can go back over here into Grass, and you'll see that it hasn't updated yet, but we can refresh like so, and it has changed the name. It just found the name of the file in my computer and it changed the name of the map set for me. So that little button right there is just to refresh all the files on your computer. So if you make any changes, you know, yourself manually, refresh here. This one is to refresh just the stuff in the current map set, which could be useful if you have a lot of map sets or something like that. It could take a while. Okay, so I'm currently in terrain analysis, but I want to make a new map set so that I can do my least cost analysis. And the way I do that very simply is to click here where it says create a new map set in the current location. So I click that and it pops up here and I'm going to call this LCA for least cost analysis and just click OK. Now I haven't moved over to the new map set yet. I'm still where it says terrain analysis it still says in use and so that tells me which one I'm currently actually in. So to move over to this I got to right click on it and say switch map set. And what does it say? Map set working. Oh, working. Okay. So because I changed the name of the that map set, it's giving me an error. So let's see if I can just force this to upload, update. I might have to reset grass. So what I'll do is I'll quickly just stop grass. Oh, I'll get back to that in a little bit here. What I just happened <laughs> in terms of the workspace file. Uh, so I'm just going to restart my grass, and when I do that, it should be fine in terms of being able to switch out of the one that I was working in. I think I had the problem because I was in that map set when I, when I started it. Yeah, that's okay. 
So we're going to close this little air window. We're going to go to my Hasa and switch into the LCA. Now it still says in use, and so we just have to refresh. And now it says current, OK? So I wouldn't worry too much about that. We're ready to go. Um, what we want to do first at this particular moment uh, oh, I can show you a couple different ways to create map sets. Under the settings, grass working environment, you have, uh, you can change your map set here. And it brings up the same little dialogue and you can pick the other ones here to change into. Um, or if you want to do it with the sort of full tool, cancel, um, you can pick change location in map set or change working environment and you've got all of these different things that you can change. So this is the OG sort of original tool that we used to use to change our map sets and location from within grass. Um, the thing that we might want to do though, especially we're going to want to do, is to change access to which map sets we can see. And so particularly we want access to terrain analysis because we want access to the slope map and all the other stuff that we made, especially we're going to need in this segment we're going to need access to the streams that we created. So I'm just going to click OK after checking that. And now when I'm over here and I go to add a new, uh, let's say, raster map, I can see what's in permanent, but I can also see what's in terrain analysis. And so I can add any one of these maps in and I can access them. If I didn't have that thing checked, so if I go back uh, and I uncheck terrain analysis and I go to add a raster map you will see that I've got permanent but that's it nothing else besides permanent so that's useful if you want to hide some map sets that hold irrelevant data some from a different part of the project that you were working on before um, but you know for today, we particularly actually want to get access to that terrain analysis data. So let's just check that and we can go. Um, OK, so let's get started. Uh, first things first, it looks like my little webcam here is lagging. And I'm, I'm just going to turn it off because you don't really need to see my face. And that way I can make my map display a little bigger on my smaller laptop screen here. And you can see some of the maps in larger uh, format. So uh, let's just uh, quickly add in the DEM, Hasa 30 meter, just so we can have something to look at. And we can just make sure we're zoomed to it, make sure that we set the computational region. And then again, before we're going to get going, we're going to want to uh, just hit this show current region, G region dash P, to make sure that the resolution is set to 30 so that it matches and everything is ready to go. So that's again your sort of due diligence that you want to do every time you start a new analysis just because you may have changed one of those settings last time and so you want to make sure that everything is right. If the region settings are different if the resolution is too fine or something you just go back into your settings computational region and then set region and you can set the resolution like I showed you last time. So now that we know everything is good to go, um, what we're going to do, I'm just going to pop back to the Layers tab so we can see the new maps as they're added, is start our first cost analysis. So like we talked about in class on Monday, uh, we can do this multiple ways, um, but we find all of the tools to do it in terrain analysis. And so there are two main tools. Technically, actually, there's three main tools that we're going to use. But two main tools to create a cost surface. There's r.cost and r.walk. Now r.walk is the one we're really going to use to do our analysis. But we're going to start first with r.cost because I think it's useful to go through a sort of manual construction of a very simple um, cost analysis. So the first thing we have to do is to take a look at the, the required. We need an input raster map of the cost information. We do not have that yet. That is something we are going to have to create. We have the name of the output map, which will be our cost uh, surface itself. 
and then we have optional outputs but particularly we need some starting points and we need some stopping points so let's deal with the cost uh, information first so in your readings for this week there is the one by Devin White that talks about how to create uh, an accurate version of Tobler's rules for hiking. Now that's a much, uh, that's a very accurate way of calculating these anisotropic costs. But what we're going to do is to very simply create an isotropic cost surface as a derivative of slope. So the first thing we have to do is to remember that uh, you know, average walking speed for humans on flat ground is about five kilometers an hour. And so we can sort of come up with a real simple conversion factor that says when the slope is zero, you'll be walking five kilometers an hour. But when the slope gets to the highest amount, let's say 90 degrees, which is the highest amount of slope possible, it slows you down to like one kilometer an hour. So what we have to do is to actually convert kilometers per hour to the time it takes to actually cross a cell. And in our particular case, we have a resolution of 30 meters on a side. And so we're going to have to figure out how much time it would take to cross a 30 meter cell when it's flat and when it's 90 degrees. And then we'll create a, a, a real quick reclassification or a linear regression, very simply, to fill in all the values on our map. So what I'm going to do, just to, I'm going to walk you through the process, uh, we're going to just use a regular calculator. We do have something called the raster calculator in which we could probably do all of this, but I'm going to save the raster calculator and map algebra for another day. So firstly, uh, kilometers per hour. We want to get to seconds of walking time because seconds are a more useful um, unit for, for this in terms of uh, the, the units of time. So an hour is 60 minutes and a minute is 60 seconds. So that's 60 times 60, which is... Uh, you know, you can do your math, it's 3,600 seconds per hour. That's just a standard conversion, okay? 3,600 seconds per hour, and we have five kilometers, so we want to get down to meters, because our resolution is in meters. So five kilometers is 5,000 uh, meters per hour, so the per is a division. So 5,000 divided by 3,600 tells us that the walking speed of five kilometers an hour is also 1.388888 uh, seconds, uh, meters per second, okay? So we can just say 1.39 meters per second. So how do we go from meters per second to the amount of time it takes to cross a 30 uh, meter um, cell? So meters per second tells us that we need to put our distance walked, which is going to be 30 meters per, another division, and then our speed there, right? So if we do that, we hit enter, we get 21.59. We can just shorten that to 21.6. So just write that down off to the side somewhere. I'm just writing 21.6 on a little notepad over here so I can remember that. So that's that one. Let's do our slow uh, speed, which we said was going to be one kilometer per hour. So 1,000 meters divided by 3,600 seconds in an hour tells us that the slow walking speed is 0.27777, so 0.28 meters per second. And so let's go with our meters divided by and we get, it takes 107.9, so we'll just round that up to 108 seconds to go on a very steep slope. So our two times are 21.6 when the slope is zero, and uh, seconds to walk across the cell when the slope is zero, and 108 seconds when the slope is 90 degrees. So what we're gonna do is convert uh, the slope using a, um, uh, a reclassification. And we have two ways to do this. We can use, uh, under just change category values and labels in the raster menu, we can do R reclass or R recode. And uh, what we can do probably simply is to use R reclass in this particular case. 
and what we're going to do is to reclassify according to the the way that it wants so in the manual again I'm going to point out that all of these things have manuals it gives some examples of how to write these kinds of rules so you could go um, you know individually one three five equals one so you can basically change the raster values from one thing to another but we're going to do this um, actually you know what I, I meant to do the other one so rewind <laughs> we're going to go back to change category values and we're going to go to recode sometimes I get confused my own self there's so many different tools right so recode is going to let us do a linear regression okay so again in the manual we're going to go down and see how they want us to do it and this looks kind of crazy old low old high new low new high with a bunch of colons between it but it's actually pretty simple once you get into it so let me just show you how to do it so the first thing is that we want to pick our slope map as the one that we want to recode and again we're going to create this is going to create a new map so we're going to call this isotropic costs okay and we're just going to type in the the values in that way so the old low is zero and we're going to put a colon the old high would be 90 and then we're going to put a colon the new low is going to be uh, 21.6 seconds and then we put a colon and the new high is going to be 108 seconds so again you're just separating these things by colon and uh, basically let's just hit run and we're going to get a map of isotropic costs and so this is just scaling from uh, uh, from slope and if we put a uh, raster legend on it and click OK and what we can see is uh, we basically got uh, you know because we don't really have any slopes of 90 degrees it stopped at about 90 seconds but the low is that 21.6 or 22 over here is what it rounded it up to and so there's our map of walking costs okay so now we need a input point to get started from um, what we could do is um, let me just close our recode and open our costs and I'm just going to pick this isotropic costs and uh, we can go to the starts we could actually pick uh, a vector map so we could pick our WHS sites or you know I showed you in the SQL query which uh, it's a video I said you could wait to look at a subset of sites so you could do it by just picking that uh, and it would start walking from all the different sites and it would go in all different directions and that could be useful for some things but what we really want to do is just to pick one place to start from so let's just load up uh, the WHS sites map we'll click OK and I'm just gonna quickly style it so that we can actually see it uh, I'll just make them be red okay so let's just uh, zoom in till we find a place sort of close to the center uh, this is a site that's real close to the to the stream bottom and we're gonna pick our little uh, query tool and making sure that WHS sites is selected we're just gonna click on that one and very usefully it has the coordinates right here so I can right click on this and just say copy the coordinates like so and uh, over here in our cost we have this under the start we have multiple coordinates of starting points east comma north so I can just paste those in there and there's east comma north so it's a pretty simple way just to get a real quick point and of course we chose this because it's a site but um, we could literally if we just have for example you know whatever one of these raster maps selected I could click anywhere with the query tool and get the same thing and I can copy any starting point so we didn't necessarily have to start on an actual vector point we could start anywhere we wanted to by querying and the last thing we want to do is to put a name of the 
output raster map, and this will be, uh, let's just say, single point uh, cost surface. You know, you can name it whatever you want. And we can just hit run, and it will do its thing. And there we go. Okay. So let's add that uh, map that we just made into our layer tree. And here we are under our LCA single point cost surface. And we'll click OK. And let's just zoom to it. And there it is. Okay. So uh, real quick, let's change our, I'm just double clicked on the legend so that I can get D legend back up and I could pick that. And here we have these values are numbers of seconds of walking time to get across the landscape. And right now it's using the Veritas color scheme. We could change the color scheme or let's just real quickly um, add in our uh, shaded relief you know, trick that we showed you last time. So we'll uh, go down to terrain analysis where we had our shaded relief map. Uh, there it is, and we'll use our newly created single point cost surface as the color drape, and we'll just quickly give it uh, 30 brightening and click OK. There we go. Now we can actually get a sense of how this cost analysis is happening. Um, remember, this was simple isotropic cost. Uh, what that means is that the cost of walking over a cell is just linked to a linear regression of slope. It doesn't matter whether you're going up or down. And of course, you know, our real simple linear regression may not be the most accurate way to create walking costs. Something like Tobler's hiking function would be much, much better. We could use the map calculator to calculate Tobler's hiking function, but a simpler way to do it is to use Naismith's rules, which are baked in to r.walk. So we're going to use r.walk to create essentially the same map, but using a more uh, sophisticated anisotropic set of walking costs. So what it wants is the elevation map. It's going to need a friction map, which I'll get to in just a minute. And then here we'll put an isotropic single point. That's going to be the name of our uh, cost surface that we're outputting. For the start point, we can do the same thing. And I still have that in memory. So that's our same starting point as before. And the only thing we need to do here is to create friction costs. And uh, remember, I mentioned in class, this is where you can get creative. This is seconds of additional walking time for different parts of the landscape. Now, it's already taking into account slope. So we don't want to use uh, our input cost that we just made. Instead, uh, let's just start with no additional friction costs. And it needs it to be in map form. So I am going to quickly show you the raster map calculator. And we're just going to use this one, rmapcap.simple. And the formula here is just going to be zero additional seconds. And we're just going to call this friction. And we're going to hit run. And there we have a map. It looks all yellow. And it's, if we query it, it's simply zero. All the values anywhere we click are going to be zero. So this is a boring map to look at. I'm just going to remove it from the view over here. Um, but what we're going to do is to go back to here on r.walk and find our friction input. And we're going to find the map that we call friction in our map set LCA. And now we can hit run. And it's going to take a little bit longer than r cost because it has to do uh, the anisotropic deal. And here we have the much more realistic looking anisotropic walking costs. And so what I'm going to do here is to add in uh, uh, another shaded relief layer. We're going to go back and find our same old uh, shaded relief times three. And we're going to put our anisotropic single point 
and um, also brighten it by 30 and click OK. And now what we can do is to just go back and forth between these two just like so and you can really see the difference between the isotropic and the anisotropic. Okay, so that's one way to compare them just, just by checking and unchecking. We also have something in the file menu called the uh, map swipe. And if we open that up, we can pick two maps to compare. So I'll put the anisotropic on the left and I'll put the uh, single point cost surface on the right and we'll just click OK and I'll just blow this up so uh, we're taking the whole map and basically what I have is a swiper and I can basically swipe and you see how they're labeled here single point is on the right and anisotropic is on the left and uh, whoops, that you can actually pan and zoom <laughs> like so so you want to grab just the line there and you can swipe back and forth and you can compare the two in any particular point. And of course, you've got all of your zoom tools. So if we wanted to zoom in on the middle, that's great. And we can sort of zoom here. And what we can see is the anisotropic surface really follows the topography a lot more accurately, more like a real person would, would walk across this landscape. OK, so if you followed along to this point, you've got the basics of how to do a uh, least cost surface from a starting point. Let us figure out how to find a least cost path, a single route from any particular place to another. And the way that we're going to do that is to go under raster, terrain analysis, and find this one called least cost route or flow r dot drain. And uh, basically, all you need to do is to pick here your cost surface uh, output map. So let's pick the one we created with our walk since it's more accurate. And uh, what we're going to do is to create this output map that's going to contain the path. So I'm just going to call this path for now. Probably should give it a more descriptive name if we wanted to save this. Um, now, the input map is a cost surface. So uh, we need to check this. Oh, and also what I forgot. <laughs> is when we ran uh, our walk is we needed to um, put another output map. One second. Optional outputs, there it is. Uh, name of output map to contain uh, moving directions. So we'll call this uh, walking directions. And I'm going to go, since I don't want to change anything else, I'm going to go to the optional tab and I'm going to overwrite. And the other thing we could have done also is check this Knight's Move to make a slightly more accurate, accurate map. I talked about Knight's Move in class. So if you want to do that, definitely feel free to check that button there. So it's going to overwrite the uh, friction surface we just, I mean, the cost surface we just made, uh, which is fine, but it's also going to output our walking directions, which is a crazy looking map like that. Um, and now we can go back to our R drain and give it that map of walking directions as well, right here. And what we need to do, remembering we have a start point for creating the cost surface and it's walking away from that start point, we need to give a point that we would be wanting to get to. But the way our drain is, works is it kind of works backwards. So we give it a start point and it works back to the place where we want to go. So let's just go back to our map display, pick our query tool, and I'm just going to pick uh, a place over here. Just a random spot. And I'm going to just copy out that coordinate. And I'm going to put it in here. Again, we could have a set of vector points if we wanted to as well. So we paste it in here. And uh, I think we can you know, check one of these things, which is accumulate the input values across the path, because then we can do a little query on it, and we'll get the total number of seconds it took to walk from one place to another. So we just hit Run. And it's going to do its thing. 
And there is our little walking path. This is the path of least resistance between, you know, the place where we started our cost surface and the place where I clicked over here to do our R drain. So if I zoom in a little bit, we'll see a little bit more specifically the uh, actual path. Now, it by default did this as a raster map and the, the raster map is one pixel wide. Let's convert that into a vector. So we'll go to File, Manage Maps, uh, sorry, Map Type Conversions, and we'll do Raster to Vector. And we have, it since it's already selected over here, it picked path.lca, but I could select it again over here. And the output vector type is path vector. And we want to make sure to tell it that we want to create a line. And we could have it uh, write the raster values as categories. So we could do that. Um, and we could also have it not build the attribute table. But we want to bring uh, the values in. And I think we're good to go at this point. So we'll just hit run. And we actually have that. So if we look over here, we have this vector. And I can, um, I can just double click on it and I can just increase the width and I can make the color something a little bit more visible. In this case, red should do. And there we go. We have our uh, least cost line. So I'll just zoom back out and we can see it. There we go. There's the path of least cost translated to a vector line. And it's been a while since I did this, so let me see if it actually brought the attribute over to it. Whoops. Yeah, and there's the value in the total number of seconds it took to walk from this point to that point. Pretty useful, kind of cool, neat. Okay, so at this point, you can take a pause you've learned the basics of single point least cost path analysis. What we want to do now is what we need for project two, which is to find the distance from our subset of sites to the streams, the nearest stream that we extracted. So what we'll do is a couple different methods of doing this, okay? So let me just, uh, get rid of basically all of this stuff and get right back down to just the Wadi Hasa um, SRTM file. And in fact, I'm going to remove that. So we're just looking at that again. And let's load in our vector map of streams that lives in our terrain analysis map set. So there we go. And again, we have points on the end of this and we could style it so that we're not looking at it. And then let's load in our, um, if we had our subset, I'm on my laptop, so I don't have my subset of sites, but I'll just load in our WHS sites. And, um, you know, I'll quickly turn those red again, just so we can see them a little easier. Select, okay. So this is where we're at. This would be a much smaller number of sites that we're going to eventually query into, but it doesn't really matter. What we're going to actually do is instead of creating the cost server starting at our points, we're going to create the cost server starting at the streams and walking outwards from the streams. And that's going to give us the cost of starting from the streams and walking to every other part of the landscape. And so we are really going to do this with our walk. And, uh, Basically, all we have to do is to go back to our required. We're still going to leave our S SRTM. We're going to still leave our friction of zero, unless you have a good reason for a different friction map. And the output map, we're going to put walking costs from streams. Now, the optional output walking directions, since we're not going to use our drain for each one, I mean, we could. You could create this if you want to, but we don't need it for, for the directions I'm giving you in project one. And here's where we're going to really change things. Instead of starting at a single point, we're going to start at a bunch of points. Now, 
it gives you two options, starting at raster points or starting at vector points. So if we wanted to, we could convert our streamlines to a bunch of points all lined up. And the way we would do this is to go to um, vector and um, generate points and generate points along lines v2 points. So we would input um, our uh, under terrain analysis our streams vector and we would say streams points and we would make sure we only input the lines from that one just by unchecking everything under selection anything except for line and right click here and we can create a distance between them if we wanted to so because we're at 30 meter resolution we just need to point every 30 and we can hit run and it will chug along and it will do its business and it will say it's finished and now we have a whole bunch of points so that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is remember when we did our streams, we actually calculated a streams uh, raster file. So let me add in, whoops, this one. Add in a raster. And if we go down to our terrain analysis, we have streams raster. And that's the one that looked like that. So we could use that or we could very simply take our uh, uh, vector lines map and change it to a raster map the same way we just basically did for the, the path we created in the last cost service step. But since we already have a uh, streams rast, we don't need to do that again. So in our walk, we can either use Vita points to create all those starting points or we could simply pick our um, streams raster starting point. You'll get the exact same result. I just wanted to show you how to do those conversions, okay? And at this point, we can just hit run. And we'll take a look at what the results are in just a second. Alrighty, so there we go. If we uh, drop our stream, uh, oops. well, I might as well, since I double clicked on that, we'll just get rid of the endpoints um, from the streams. And I'll drag the streams to the very top. And I'll change the color to something that we can see. And I'll just make them red. That's my default for the color scheme that we're working with right now. So there's our streams. That's the places where it started walking from. And I think you can see how it's accumulating the cost of walking away from the streams. And so if we uh, add in our raster legend for that cost surface, we can see the number of seconds, right? To the furthest distance, 3971, which is just a little bit more than an hour. Remember, 3,600 seconds in an hour. So basically, everywhere in Wadi Hassa is within uh, about an hour, with definitely within an hour and a half of streams. So how do I then get that information and bring it into my set of sites? Well, here again is our Wadi Hassa sites. And again, you'll be using your subset of sites. And what you'll need to do is to add a new column in the data table. And uh, because my Wadi Hasa sites is actually living in permanent, I, I'm not able to add a new column uh, under the manage tables. It's all grayed out. So it won't let me edit this one, which is a good safety check. Um, but I could add a new column the way I showed you in the SQL very, uh, video. And then I would just use the same system under vector and update attributes and uh, sample raster maps at point location, v what rast. And I would, uh, for my input uh, 
vector points, I'd pick my vector points map that I'm working with, and the map to be queried would be the walking cost from streams. And you would upload that value directly in as a column into your table, and you can use v.univer to calculate the mean and standard deviation, just like I showed you in the SQL video. Now, that gives us the cost along the anisotropic walking cost surface. Let's compare that to a simpler way of doing this, which is the straight line Euclidean geometric distance. And here, we can very simply do that with something called nearest features, or V distance. We would uh, pick the from map, which is going to be our points. Let me just make this bigger. And again, I don't have my subset of points, but I'm just going to say, you know, your su subset here. And the type is points. And uh, the values describing the relation between the newest features, what you want is the minimum distance, linear minimum distance to nearest feature. The two is going to be your uh, streams vector map over here. And again, we just want to make sure that we're only showing line. And, oh, sorry, I reversed that. The from <laughs> should be the streams. And we want to make sure that that is just a line. And the two is going to be your site points over here. And you just want that to be point. And then you'll have need to have made a new column, linear distance. And you'll pick that over here to upload to, whatever it is. And then you just hit run. And it will upload those linear distances. And you can al uh, analyze them with v.univer, again, as I show you in the SQL video. So at this particular moment, we're done with our least cost analysis. I think you can see that there's a lot you can do with this. We've done single point. You could do multi-point starting at different individual points. You can do paths between two particular places. If you get creative, you can create cost surface from every individual starting point and map them together in different ways to create really complex cost surface outputs. You can get creative with the friction value that you put into RWOC, and you certainly can get creative with the post analysis, what you do with the data that you created. And I think that is where I am going to sign out for now.